chubby boy. He is so chubby. Good morning, friends. Happy Wednesday. So today I'm going to take you with me to one of my favorite locations to shoot at in Connecticut. It's actually an art museum, but it's also open to the public. It has these beautiful grounds. Um, they have a flower garden in the spring and summer. They have hiking trails, huge lawn areas, and the museum building itself is really, really pretty. It's sort of like an old style building with like white pillars. Um, so we're gonna use that as our backdrop today. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more detailed makeup look today. Um, let me know if you guys are into this. I know that I personally love watching people do their makeup, so <laughs> I thought that today I'd show you guys just a little bit more detail on how I do my makeup. We're gonna be doing a blue eye makeup look today to go along with my blue and green um, color theme that I currently have going on on the gram, and you can check that out if you want. Go ahead and follow me at Nicole in Color on Instagram. I did also just get TikTok. I'm on there at nicole.in.color. And color is always gonna be with a U, C O L O U R. And I'll give you guys my usual spiel. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna hear more of what you like about these videos, what you wanna see, and I really, really hope that you enjoy. Let's go do our hair and makeup. Okay, so I obviously start with my skincare routine, and the first thing that I do in the morning is to my toner, and I use this Dr. Teal's Witch Hazel Facial Toner. It smells amazing. I worked with them before, and I just really, really love this toner. It's super hydrating. I generally have like drier skin, so this is perfect for me. Um, after the toner, I'll come in with my rotep seed oil with 0.5 retinol. This is from Makeup Revolution. Just put that all over my face and gently rub in it. I really like this oil. My face loves oils and rosehip seed oil is great for anti-aging. And the retinol is good for feeding any dark spots, age spots, and it's gentle enough to use every day. So shiny. <laughs> so usually I'll take a little second to just like brush my teeth or do something random while the oil sort of like sinks into my skin. But we're just gonna wait for like five minutes, let it sink in, and then I'm gonna put on my SPF. So I am in between SPFs right now. I usually use a different one. I actually like using a different one a lot better, but this is the one that I had handy and gotta use that SPF, so. So once I have all of my skincare done, I will usually start with this Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline. You guys have probably seen this before. I use the color 110 Fair. And this is just like a really, really easy, kind of lazy girl way to just make your skin look a little bit nicer. And I honestly try not to go too crazy. I just basically want to remove any redness. And then I'll just come in with buffing brush. Blend it in. And you can see that just like little amount of concealer made such a huge difference. No more redness. My skin already looks so much better. <laughs> it's a miracle. Next, I do my contour, and again, I just try to keep some things simple when it comes to my skin. I've been using this uh, NYX NYX Wonder Stick, and it actually has a highlighting side too, but I only use this contouring side. I just put that right up. Right above that line where your drop bone is. Use the same brush and I just blend it up and then sort of blend it into my cheek. And then just the excess will just kind of like move around <laughs> on my face. Super easy, 
nothing crazy. And then after the contour, I'll come in. I really, really love this. It's Pacifica Cherry Velvet Matte Translucent Setting Powder. And I really, really love this setting powder. I've tried so many different setting powders. I need to use a setting powder underneath my eyes because otherwise any makeup I put on the lower like lash line will just slowly slide down my face. And this really, really helps without being like too much. I found that a lot of setting powders, if I like cake it on where I'm like baking, it just like sinks right into all of the lines in my skin and this stuff definitely does not. And it's also like just super light, it smells really nice and it gets the job done. And the nice thing is you only need like a tiny bit. So the last step I do for my skin is highlighting and I'm just using this Too Faced Candlelit Glow and that is in Rosy Glow. And again, I've had all of this makeup for so long. <laughs> I pretty much use everything that I really like until it's completely gone. And then I'll come in with this brush, which is just like a skinny brush. <laughs> I'll use this to go down the bridge with my nose, which I think makes a huge difference and is super, super easy to do to like really quickly contour your nose. I basically just go right down the center or as center as I can. And then right on the tip. And you can see that's already made like a really nice highlight. And then I'll just blend it in if I need to. a little bit, a little sun sun. And then I'll usually take a little bit more and go like along the top of my lips. And that just gives it like a little highlight, a little something extra. Looks good to me. And then after I'm done with my eyes, I can always come back in, do a little bit more like over my brow bone. We're gonna do eyebrows. And again, I like to keep pretty much everything aside from my eyes really, really simple. I just go in with this e.l.f. Ultra Pre Precise Brow Pencil. Just do upward strokes and then a little bit along the bottom. And just really lightly fill everything in. So I'm pretty much just filling in like the sparse areas right in the front. And I don't really do much to like my arch area because I don't really think it needs it. Voila. And then I blend it out. And sometimes I'll come back in just with like what's left over on my powder brush. And I'll just kind of go around, make sure everything's nice and blended. Now we're gonna start on our eyes and I'm gonna use this Makeup Revolution palette. Probably gonna use maybe a couple shades in here. This is from Sephora ABH Norvina collection. And this has like such fun colors in it. So obviously those are more green and I do want to go for more of a blue, so I might just use those to do some highlighting. So I think I'm going to start with this color and just put that all over the eye. So far so good. I think I'm gonna keep it a little bit lighter. Then I'm gonna go in with this green. This is really pretty. I'm actually just gonna use my finger and we're gonna make that our highlight. So you can already see a huge difference. Just a little. And then I'm gonna put some in the inner corners as well of that same highlight color. All right, so eyeshadow is done. Now I'm gonna come in with my liquid liner. This is NYX Professional Makeup Epic Ink Liner. I start from the outer corner and just make a flick going up and then sort of fill in and connect.
Alright, so now I'm gonna go in with my mascara. First, I'm going to curl my lashes. I'm using Melloway Mascara. So after we do mascara, I'm just gonna pop on some lipstick and then be all set. All right, you guys, so I finished off today's look with Sephora Lip Stories in Wee number three. I really love this lipstick. It goes on super smooth and this color is really nice. Just like a neutral lip to go along with the bolder eye. That completes the look. So I'm gonna go do my hair and I'll show you guys the final beauty look and then we'll talk styling and go shoot some photos. Here is the final beauty look. My hair is all curly, makeup is all set, and super, super love it. So today I'm gonna be styling some wide leg jeans, and I've had these for a couple years now. They have a really cool detail on bottom. So they have this like stripe of light denim. They are Calvin Klein and I actually discovered them. It was one of those situations where you're at a TJ Maxx and you're just like looking around and you find like the one piece that is in your size. It's like nowhere else to be seen and it's just that perfect like fashion fate. <laughs> so I was so so happy when I discovered those. They're really really long and that was like so amazing to me because I'm really tall and 5'10 so I can never ever find wide leg pants that are long enough for me and these are like dragging on the ground which just makes me so happy and then I'm gonna pair it with this top from Anthropology, and this is actually another find from um, Retail 101 which I talked about in a couple weeks ago's video and as you can see this is like a really nice lime sort of green. It's got like a little tie-dye situation going on and it's just like a really light button up. Perfect for spring and summer for once it starts to get warmer out. The material is like really light. It's almost like a little bit sheer so it gives it like just a tad bit of sexiness. So I'm gonna get dressed. I'm gonna get all of my stuff together and then I will see you in the car. So it's the first really nice day in a while. It's like 60 degrees out right now. Not wait for spring to officially be here. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about classic styles. My mom and I were having this conversation the last time I saw her about sort of like what you should have in your closet that can be timeless. And we were talking about the Chanel suit and how, you know, back in the day, like, that was your staple piece and you wore it for like 50 years <laughs> and that's why like you spent so much money on it because that was your thing but you know nowadays like everything is so different and a lot of people obviously could never afford like a Chanel suit I certainly could never afford that we were like discussing how you can sort of create a wardrobe that could be potentially timeless regardless of trends what is considered like a classic piece for you know the new generation being like a 30 year old i'm sort of like thinking about this a lot because i want pieces in my closet that are going to last me you know at least a decade <laughs> like i would rather have pieces in my closet that i keep forever rather than just like getting rid of stuff every year and getting new stuff every year so that's something that i always try and think about like whenever i'm shopping is this gonna be something that I can potentially wear forever? Is this gonna fit me? Just stuff like that. So when we were talking about it, I was like, okay, well, I think, you know, every woman in her closet should have like a pantsuit because that's something you can wear to like so many different functions. You can wear it to work, you can wear it to like a nice event. And nowadays you can find pantsuits everywhere in every size, shape, and color. So I was, you know, just thinking a lot about that and sort of how to translate like some of the trends that are happening now 
to be, you know, like appropriate for your age, but also still keeping in your own personal style. And I think that that's really important. Like when you're shopping, you want to make sure that the pieces that you're buying are going to be pieces that you feel good in. I used to be a stylist at Free People and that's always what I told people. But I think for a lot of pieces that, you know, could be potentially timeless, in my opinion, it's better to spend a little more money than maybe you might normally to get something that's going to be perfect for you something that's going to fit you perfectly something that's going to be like exactly your style and i'm not talking like you don't have to spend like thousands of dollars or anything sometimes it pays to spend a little bit more money than you might normally to get something that's going to last you 30 years or something i guess it's sort of hard to figure out a balance between having pieces that are timeless and having pieces that are trendy. Obviously, a lot of trends will come back around and it's actually so funny because I used to have all of these corset tops and I think I might even still have some like at my mom's house still, but corset tops are like so back in style now and for a couple years like they were nowhere to be seen. You can sort of get away with like buying some trendy pieces if you really really love them because chances are they're going to come back in style. So I am walking around trying to figure out where to set up. Everything is still pretty dead. As you can see, there's not much green. I'd like to get the white house in the background. So the only thing is there are people sitting on the porch. Um, so I'll have to work around that or maybe just Photoshop them out. But it's so nice out and this is such a beautiful spot. This week I wanted to share a little sneak peek of some new spring presets that I've been working on for in color presets. And you guys know you can shop all of my existing presets up on the blog, the link is in the description and make sure you sign up to the email list to get 15% off your first purchase. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. Make sure you leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the description for all the links that you need to know. Make sure you give me a follow on Instagram. There is so much content over there already. Every week I put out creative tips. I put out posing videos, lots of reels, lots of self-care, all that good stuff. So go check it out. And as always, if you have any questions or want to see anything coming up, let me know, leave me a comment, and I will make sure to get on it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys next week. Bye!